What's up guys, Lon here from Android Authority, and Samsung is looking to reinvent the wheel with their latest smartwatch. This is your first look and hands-on of the Samsung Gear S2. With the Gear S2, Samsung is looking to really make an impact in the wearable space by changing the way we interact and use a smartwatch. It's a circular smartwatch and it's going to come in two different versions. The regular Gear S2, which has a more modern and minimalist design, and the Gear S2 Classic, which has a more traditional take on watch design for a more timeless and elegant appearance. The other big difference between the two lies in the bands, with the Gear S2 featuring silicone bands, whereas the Classic will come with leather straps, both of which felt really comfortable on the wrist and the silicone bands were surprisingly very soft. The bands come in different sizes and styles so there's going to be something for everyone and they're also very easy to swap out. On the Gear S2 they simply just slide out of the body and on the Classic you have a more familiar spring bar mechanism that you would find on a lot of normal watches. On the side of the watch you'll notice two buttons. The top button is basically your back button to take you back a previous step and the second button functions as a home key and as a shortcut to quickly launch into the app drawer. And finally on the back side you'll find a heart rate sensor to help you monitor your health and fitness. Outside of the design differences, they're practically the same watch, but the real kicker with the Gear S2 is the rotating bezel, and this is no doubt the best part about this smartwatch. The bezel is used for navigating through all the various parts of the UI, like the watch faces, widgets, notifications, apps, etc., and whenever you turn it, it gives off this extremely satisfying click, which makes it not only fun to use, but also great just to fiddle around with. It's also very easy to turn with just your finger, and it just makes sense in terms of how intuitive it feels, and it sort of makes you wonder why no one's thought of it until now. On the front of the watch is a 1.2 inch Super AMOLED display with 360 by 360 resolution, and so far the screen looks really good. It's plenty sharp for a smartwatch display, and of course since it's AMOLED, it should be much more battery friendly, and you've got all the usual things you might expect like vibrant punchy colors, great viewing angles, and deep blacks. Inside the Gear S2 is running on a dual core 1GHz processor with 512MB of RAM and 4GB of internal memory, which should be more than enough for a smooth and seamless experience, and comes with all the usual connectivity like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and NFC, which can be used to take advantage of Samsung Pay, but Samsung is looking to expand its use in a variety of different ways like smart car keys, residential room keys, or remotely controlling your home. The watch is also IP68 certified against water and dust, but this is designed to just protect the watch itself, so if you get the classic version, don't expect the leather to hold up well underwater. The battery is a 250 milliamp hour cell, and Samsung is promising at least two to three days worth of battery life, which sounds pretty reasonable for a smartwatch, and it also comes with wireless charging, with a wireless charger that looks eerily similar to the Moto 360. For the software, the Gear S2 is running on Samsung's own Tizen platform, and in conjunction with the rotating bezel, it's fairly easy to navigate. To the left of the watch face are all of your notifications like messages and emails, and to the right side are all of your widgets, and you can pretty much add a widget for anything such as health and fitness, news, weather, or even music. The watch faces are also customizable, and not only can you change the watch faces, but you can also change the way they look and what type of information they show, like the current weather or battery life. Just like any typical smartwatch, the Tizen OS lets you send and receive notifications like emails and text messages, and you can also respond to messages through voice input, emojis, or just use good old-fashioned T9-style typing with the virtual keyboard. Another really useful feature of the Gear S2 is the ability for notifications to still sync even if the watch isn't connected directly to your smartwatch via Bluetooth. It works pretty similarly to Android Wear, so as long as your watch is connected to a Wi-Fi network, your notifications will still sync through the cloud. One of the most important things when it comes to any sort of mobile product is the app selection, and in order for Samsung to make the Tizen platform as robust as possible, they've partnered with a bunch of different companies like eBay and Groupon for commerce, Twitter and Line for social, and CNN and Bloomberg for news. The list goes on, but Samsung says there's going to be around a thousand apps when the Gear S2 launches. And if you're big on fitness, Samsung has their own S Health app, but they've also partnered with companies like Nike and Lifesum to help you keep track of your goals.
Even though the Gear S2 is running Tizen, it's going to be compatible with any Android device running 4.4 KitKat or higher with at least 1.5 gigs of RAM, which should cover the good majority of Android users. Samsung has yet to announce any sort of pricing or availability, but once they do, we'll definitely keep you posted on AndroidAuthority.com, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But this has been a quick hands-on look of the Samsung Gear S2. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and also subscribe to the channel, which is also down below if you haven't already there's a lot more here to come at ifa 2015 so keep it tuned to android authority because we are your source for all things android and ifa 2015